Hello, good morning, everyone. So who wants to be Insta famous? Everybody, right? I don't know how Insta famous you can be with pathology images. Maybe I'm not the right authority to talk about Insta famous because I'm not really Insta famous. Later, I'm gonna show you my Instagram feed, but we're gonna talk about how to take good microscopic pictures. I take them for pathology, but it counts for any type of microscopic photography, more for the scientific side, than the artistic side, although uh, you can also take for art. So there are different tiers of equipment that we can use. Well, we need a microscope. Let's assume we need a microscope. A full disclosure, I'm going to be talking to you about some equipment that assume that I'm an affiliate for whatever I'm talking about, unless I say otherwise. And what does it mean affiliate? That if you buy this equipment through the links that I provide, then I get a small provision, a small percentage of this price. So here is the disclosure. On and I note, if I didn't like this equipment, I wouldn't recommend it. So this is basically what I use. And I am affiliate for everything I'm going to be talking about, except for a phone. I'm not an affiliate for a phone. We start with the phone. What you do, you basically take your phone and try to visualize your field of view in the microscope. And it may be all you need for good microscopic pictures because the phone cameras are so good now. They are really high resolution. You can zoom in on the phone you can have the objective, the power you want to use, and you don't need anything else than the phone, unless you're a little bit impatient like I am. And I am a little bit impatient, but I'm going to show you later in a second who is more patient than me and has freaking fantastic pictures. And I would consider her insta famous in the pathology world. But what I'm using, I'm using an adapter for the phone. So it has a specific case. It lives in this case. And the company I work with is Scoped Micro. So if you want more details on this, just let me know scoped micro or phone case in the comments. But basically this has a little attachment to the case that it lives in. And then it has an eyepiece adapter. So the important thing is because I tried many of those cases from Amazon where you can like just take your phone and attach it with some screws and something very disruptive to the workflow and doesn't really hold the phone. And then I found out about this thing that has this eyepiece adapter. So what's happening, you take the ocular, take the eyepiece out of the microscope, put this thing with your phone instead, and you take pictures. And this attaches to this disc that I have here. And then I put this thing in into my microscope and then I take control on the screen. This thing also has an app if you want to share, but you can just share it on WhatsApp if you want to share. Um, so very much, very handy thing for a non-disruptive, you know, you have your phone if you need a quick consultation. So that's the kind of second tier of equipment. And then if you like it, if you have a trinocular microscope, if you want to take it a little bit to the next level with more editing capacities, you can think of a microscope camera. And I have one that I'm using. It's called Path 4K from iMiller Microscopes. This one normally sits on my microscope on the trinocular, so I don't have to take an eyepiece out. So because taking an eyepiece is a little bit disruptive when you like are in the flow and are looking at things and don't want to take this thing out and put it back in. So then if you want that, if you really like need more pictures, then you get the microscope camera. This one is cool because it is 4K. So it's a super high resolution. It has a streaming option. It has many different options that I can also let you know more about if you leave me the comment. So comment phone case for the phone case, comment camera for the camera. I can do it separately. For now, I just wanted to let you know about those three different tiers of equipment. So just phone, adapter, and a microscope camera. This is our equipment. What about the quality of those pictures? Well, sharp picture is a no brainer. It has to be sharp, but sharp means a little bit different for those who do take pictures of an anatomic pathology slide. And for those who take uh, pictures of cytology slides, because on anatomic pathology slide, it should be flat. It shouldn't have like different levels of focus. Sometimes it has, but usually big chunks of the slide are on the same level and you focus on what you want to see, what you want to show in the picture. Whereas in cytology, we have many levels. That's why we use for Z stacking for appropriate whole slide imaging. We have to image at different levels. And depending on what you want to show, which cell, which clump of cells, which part of the cell, if you want to show granules, something cellular that is of importance, this is where you're going to be focusing on. These are the two modalities. And that's why focus, especially on the cytology side, is a little bit tricky, very much 
much depends what you want to show. Sometimes you need multiple pictures to show what you want to show because those cells are like crooked in the smear and they don't want to sit in the same level. So quality, also composition of the picture belongs to the quality. So composition, you probably have heard of rule of thirds. So if you look now at the screen and you would divide it into thirds vertically and into thirds horizontally, then for nice composition in the non-pathology world, you would want to place your subject of interest of at any of the line crossings. So here, like my eye would, I'm not supposed to be in the middle. I'm supposed to be a little to the side and my head should be, or my eye the best should be where the lines cross. This is like beautiful composition, unless you're doing portrait. Forget about it. This is not what we do in pathology, especially on the science side rather than, or the art side. We want to have the thing that we want to show in the center, center of the image. And uh, for conferences or for any type of uh, scientific communication, especially Especially when you are communicating with people who are from a different background than yours, you want to show something that they're not so familiar with. First of all, the thing should be in the center. And if it cannot be on the center, or if there are multiple, you make some kind of markups. You make a star or anybody who did a poster for a conference, you know, you have to put an arrow, you have to put a star exactly at the thing that you want to show. So in social media, the images are usually used for some kind of education, sometimes for entertainment because they're pretty and I use this a lot. I put pretty picture without too much of educational value other than saying what the tissue is, which can also a uh, tissue and, and cell and whatever there is, which sometimes depending on the level where people are and the granularity of information that they need is useful as well. So this always provides this information, even if it's just for fun picture, but composition stuff that we want to show in the center. Because then when somebody scrolls in their feed and has this little opportunity to learn something and actually reads the caption, this has to be in the center. And especially on Instagram, those things are square, center of the square. Then the information that you want to convey depends on, or rather the magnification, the level of zoom that you want to include. So combination of your objective eyepiece and the zoom on your phone or on your camera that you can apply if that's the case as well, depends on on what do you want to show? So there are lesions or changes. We can divide the changes into patterns and then cellular changes from the visual standpoint. Obviously patterns are something that is composed of cellular changes, but patterns, you see them at a lower magnification. You don't zoom in so much because sometimes you recognize a change by its pattern and not by the single cell. You don't have to go to a very high magnification. So if you want to show a change that is changing the pattern of tissue, then you go low magnification, low zoom. If you want to show cell and cell and cytology, that's what you want to show always. That's why it's called cytology. I know. Cytology, you're going to go super high power and even higher than what I have on my microscope. So cytology will have 100x, might have oil immersion. I My microscope is up to 40x and that's totally enough for an anatomic pathologist. So that's going to be the level of magnification. If it's pattern, you need to show the whole pattern. So I see this also as a bit of a confusion factor when developing image analysis models because there you do annotations so you basically annotate the structure of interest and I talk to people who want to develop models for a pattern change on a cellular level and it doesn't make sense because the cells without the context of the pattern in isolation they look okay only if you have the comparison to other cells that are maybe bigger smaller there is the difference so both for visual perception for showing in the picture like living for hypertrophy, you have cells that are bigger, but you have to compare them to the rest of the organ of the liver. They're smaller. So this is a pattern, whereas cytology, everything is a cell or a single cell necrosis is a cell. Then you go and do an image of this cell. So composition, no rule of thirds, everything in the center. And if you want to draw an arrow or put the star, you put it there. Then we have the magnification pattern, lower magnification, you show more cell, higher magnification, you show more. And sometimes for cytology, if you want this to be diagnostic, not just informative, if you're consulting this, you might need to show it at different focus levels. You might need to take a series of pictures of things that are next to each other. Or you can actually make a video because both with cameras and with phones, you can basically do a video and start driving the slides, start looking at the slides under the microscope, and you can record on video. So this is super diagnostic, super informative if you want to show just more than one thing. And then 
if we want to be insta famous or if we just want to make pictures that are beautiful for conferences for presentations for any type of communication medical scientific communication we need to do some editing but don't worry we need to we do not need to master photoshop there's one thing one and only thing if you have taken care of the uh, picture is sharp the picture is bright enough which it's gonna be because if you have auto exposure on your phone and you have bright light from the microscope you basically don't need to worry about if it's too dark or too light and this you can adjust uh, just personal preference but there's one thing that you should always do and when you look at my instagram feed which i'm going to show you in a second you will know where i did it and where i didn't do it this is white balance so what i use for my photo from the phone editing is a free app called snapseed and there is an option to do white balance and how you do it you choose this option and you point this option pointer to a place white place in your image and it assigns a white value to this place and adjusts other colors accordingly if you have ever seen some grayish pictures on presentations or posters yellowish ones or any other type of filter unintended filter this is where somebody didn't do the white balance for scientific for for microscopic pictures you do want to do that it's not really sky sunset or anything you're showing something that uh, of course it's pretty but the point is to keep the colors as they are when you're looking under the microscope so this is something that you want to do white balance and you can do this in the snapseed you can do this on the microscope camera there is an option for that but basically this is what's gonna take your pictures to the next level and i want to show you just the difference where i did it and where i didn't do it on my screen so <laughs> here i didn't do it here i did do it here I did do it, here I did do it, but here it doesn't look like I did it. So you can see this background here is grayish. This is some kind of yellowish and this is a different stain. So this doesn't count, but everything that is just H and E here, white is white. That was cytology. It had a bunch of dirt in the background. So let's not count that one, but here white is white. Here white is not so white. This is whiter, this is so-so. But basically the purpose of white balance is that white is white. And let's see if I can show you this other lady who is fantastic. And she doesn't use any equipment. She just uses her phone, I think iPhone. She's working in the veterinary pathology lab. And look at this, 36.6K followers. She sure is Insta famous in the pathology world. So this is her style. And that's how she takes her pictures. Here, I think she didn't do white balance. Here she did. But basically she just uses her phone. And the interesting thing is in the center, she's like, I follow her and like all of her pictures because they are really beautiful not only informative she always writes something there she actually educates so i hope this was useful for you and this was just a quick life to tell you how to take better pictures so choose your equipment if you have patience totally go with your phone if you have less patience so find an adapter and if you want any information about the adapter or the camera just drop me a comment i can send you more information about that then composition no rules of thirds everything in the center in focus especially important for cytology what you want to show magnification if it's pattern show it at lower mag if it's something specific small then show it at higher mag don't do the cell well you can do a series of pictures but basically often in pathology the pattern is that already diagnostic so show the pattern and for editing one thing to remember always is the white balance and one additional information even if you want to publish on a poster for a scientific poster or blow them up uh, print them out as artwork or whatever phones especially the high phones the, the newer phones are totally enough you don't need anything else but if you want to be more fancy a camera is a good thing to go so thank you so much for joining me Thank you for staying till the end. I hope you're going to take your phone and take some cool microscopic pictures this week. And don't forget to click the link in the description and get your guide how to take stunning microscopic pictures for Instagram presentations and even scientific publications. It's right there for you to take so that you never forget how to take great pictures.